Hey everyone, my name is Kanaya Gupta and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss two pointer technique. But before moving ahead, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any update. Let's start. Guys, in this lecture, I am going to cover a couple of things. So I'll just give you a brief about it what we are going to cover here. What is two pointer technique? Why you must know about it? Variants of two pointer technique, opposite directional and equidirectional, and how to use it. And now finally, I'll show you the demo. So let's jump into it. What is two pointer technique? Two pointer technique is normally used for searching and it uses two pointer in one loop over the given data structure. This is a quite common technique which is used to solve coding interview problems, mostly related to strings, arrays, and linked list. Why you must know about it? In order to use two pointers, most of the time the data structure needs to be ordered in some way, which helps us to reduce the time complexity from on square or on cube to on. That is the reason you should know about this algorithm because it will help you to reduce the time complexity from on square or on cube to on of just one loop with two pointer and searches each item just one time. So depending on whether the input string or array is sorted or not, the two pointer method can take all n log n time. Why n log n? Because if the input is not sorted, so there's a maybe a chances you have to sort that explicitly before applying this technique. So in that case, the sorting will take n log n time. So the complexity will be n log n. But if the input is already ordered, in that case, the complexity will drastically reduce to O n time. So that is the reason you should know about this algorithm. So if data structure, array, linked list, if it is already sorted, you can use this algorithm, which can reduce your complexity. Variants of two pointer. So based on my knowledge, currently we have only two variants of two pointer technique. One is opposite directional and the second is equidirectional. In opposite directional, one pointer starts from the beginning while the other pointer starts from the end and they move towards each other until they both meet or some condition satisfy. So you can see here something like this. So in equidirectional, both start from the beginning. One will be a slow pointer and the other will be a fast pointer. So you can take an example like sliding window. The last time we have already discussed sliding window technique guys, but in that I have not discussed this that how we are going to achieve this via two pointer but unknowingly you are using the two pointer technique over there that i'll show you how but for now you can see there are two pointer one is start and end and when the window slides the pointer also will move towards from left to right and both are moving in a same direction or you can say equidirection so i hope guys you know what is two pointer technique why you must know it and what are the variants we have. So we'll see the example on these two variants. But before that, we'll just see. So there are a lot of coding problems, guys. But I have captured a couple of coding problems, which is based on opposite directional. And these all problems are present in lead code. So you can go and solve all these problems. But today, I will show you how to solve two some problems. And these are the coding problems which is based on equidirectional approach. So in that also we have couple of problems which is from lead code and couple of problems which is very common like finding a middle node of a linked list, detecting a loop inside a linked list and all. So in that also I am going to solve one problem in front of you which is I'm finding the maximum sum of any continuous subarray of size k. So I show you how to solve one problem from both the variants. So after watching this tutorial, you should be able to solve all the problems which is present on lead code. So let's start. First, we are going to solve two sum problem. Given an array of integers that is already sorted in ascending order, find two numbers such that they add up to a specific target number. Along with that, there was one additional information was given inside the question. The function two sum should return indices of two numbers such that they add up to the target where index 1 must be less than index 2. 
So this was the additional information which was given. So let's see some example first. So this is a example one guys. So in that we have an input num sorry in that we have a 2 7 11 15 and the target is 9. So for this input the output will be 1 and 2 because the sum of 2 and 7 is 9 and 2 7 is present at index 1 and index 2. Guys okay, here one thing we have to notice they are following the one based index. Normally the array starts from 0 onwards but here they are using one base indexing. So you have to keep this in your mind while solving this question. Let's take another example. Example 2. So in that input we have this array and the target is 6. So you can see the output for this input is 3 and 4. Because the sum of 3 and 3 is 6 and therefore the index is 3 and index 2 is 4. I hope guys you got the idea what is expected in this problem statement. So let's try to solve this problem. So I've taken the same example guys which we have just discussed. So this is the nums array and target is 6. And this is the same array we have noted down the index on top of it. So we'll take two pointer here. One is start and one at the end. So start pointer is pointing to minus 3 element and the end is pointing to 15. So if you sum these two elements minus 3 and 15, the answer will be 12, which is greater than the target. So it means the sum whatever we have achieved is more than the target one, but we are looking for the lesser sum. So in this array, we already know if we go from left to right, it's an increasing order because this is a sorted one. And if we go from right to left, it's a decreasing order. The sum of these two elements right now is 12, which is greater than 6. So we have to reduce this sum. How we can reduce that? If we move from right to left. As we know the start pointer cannot move towards left because nothing is there. So we will move end pointer towards left side. So once we decrement this pointer by 1, the position of pointer will be like this. And this time, if we take the sum minus 3 and plus 8, the sum is 5. And this time the 5 is lesser than 6. So now this time we want to increase the sum. Right? So for increasing from left to right is an increasing order. So this time we'll move a start pointer towards right side. Or you can say we are going to increment the start pointer. So start pointer will move to the next element. So again, let's take the sum of these two elements 2 plus 8. So this time the sum of these two elements is 10 which is greater than 6. So again if the sum is greater we are going to move end pointer towards left side. So this time we will take the sum of these two elements 2 plus 6 which is equal to 8 which is again greater than 6. So move the end pointer towards left side. So again the sum will be 2 plus 3 equals to 5. So sum is lesser than 6 this time. So move the start pointer towards right hand side. So now take the sum. So now sum is 6, which is matching to our target sum. So once the condition is satisfied, we are going to break this loop and going to return the indices of these two elements. So there was two condition guys when we should break the loop, when the both pointer meets and the second one if condition satisfy. So in our case, you can see both pointers also met and the condition also satisfy because now we are in that situation where end pointer cannot go beyond left and the start pointer cannot go beyond end. So we have to make sure we are dealing with this condition otherwise there will be an infinite loop. So you have to traverse this array by a two pointer until unless start is less than end. So start should not cross end pointer and end should not cross the start pointer. So here we are done with the iteration. So let's see the code for this. So this is the method guys to sum. So in that we have a two parameter nums which is the array and the target. And we have to return the enter array. Basically the array which holds two element the indices of two element. Right. So I have taken one variable start which is a start pointer which will start from the zero index. And taken one more pointer and which will start from the 
right hand side from the length of the array and we have array which will hold the indices at the end so there's a loop while loop where we have mentioned that clearly this condition start is less than end so we have to iterate over the array until start is less than end and that we are summing these two element nums start and nums end and comparing whether the sum equals to target or not if it is equals to target it means we have done with the processing and we have got our answer so we are storing the indices into the result array guys here you can see i have doing plus one here because in problem statement it's clearly mentioned the indexing is one based that's why i'm adding plus one to the index and breaking the loop over here and else if sum is less than the target in that case we are going to increment the start pointer else sum is greater than the target in that case we are going to decrement the end pointer and we have to keep on doing this thing until start is less than end so at the end we are going to return the result let's talk about the complexity guys while loop will go until start is less than end and we have overall n elements inside the array so at max this loop will go to n times so the complexity of the solution will be on so i hope guys you have got the idea how we are going to use two pointer technique in opposite directional so now let's talk about the equidirectional approach so this is a problem statement from equidirectional given an array of integer n and a positive number k find the maximum sum of any contiguous subarray of size k guys those who have not watched my previous tutorial on sliding window technique please go and watch it because i am going to refer the same thing over here but in a different way so given an array of integer n and a positive number k find the maximum sum of any contiguous subarray of size k so let's take the example guys to understand more about it so this is the input we have given a array and a window size k so we have to return the maximum sum of k size window so a subarray with maximum sum is 513 and the sum of these element is 9 so let's take the another example so we have this array as an input and k equals to 4 and the output is 13 so the sum array with maximum sum is 9 minus 1 minus 2 and 7 so if you sum all these elements you will get 13 which is the maximum sum can be achieved from this array of window size 4 so let's solve this so this is the same setup guys which we have seen earlier so in that we have a window size k equals to 4 so first of all we are going to take a sum of these four elements which is 7 so the window sum is 7 so when this window slide the new element will be a part of this window and the element which was on the left hand side will leave the window so basically the two elements is impacting the window sum the one which is just added into the window and the one which just left out the window so there was one pointer which was pointing to the 7 and we have given a name as end so when we move to our right hand side or basically slide the window the one pointer will help us to add the element new element which will be part of the window and the one pointer will help us to remove the element which is not a part of the window so previously we were using this formula where we are using a end which is the element which is getting added and a and minus k which is just getting removed from the window so instead of that we are going to use one more pointer which is called start pointer which will point to this element which is just left out so now we know the window size is fixed so whenever we move end pointer towards right the start pointer will also move towards right side so let's calculate the new window sum here the previous window sum is 7 plus a of end is 7 minus a of start is 1 so the window sum is 13 now so let's slice the window towards right now both the pointer will move towards right so this time the end is pointing to 3 and the start is pointing to 9 so let's do the calculation again so the previous sum is 13 plus a of end is 3 minus a of start is 9 so the window sum is 7 so let's move the window again so this time the end pointer will point to minus 1 and the start pointer also will point to minus 1 so let's 
do the calculation again. So previous window sum which was 7 plus a of end which is minus 1 minus a of start which is again minus 1. So the window sum is 7 now. So let's slide the window one more time. So this time the end pointer will move to the end. Pointing will be and will be pointing to 2 and start pointer will be pointing to minus 2. So the new window sum will be 11. So now we have reached towards the end of the array. So we cannot go beyond that. So now end pointer is pointing to the end of the array. So now we cannot move further. So we are going to stop our iteration here itself. So finally the maximum sum of summary of size k is 30. So now this algorithm can be coded something like this. We are accepting two parameters array a and k. So we have couple of variable here window sum which will maintain the window sum max sum which we are going to return as the answer and two pointers one is start and second is end. So we will first take the sum of k elements which is the size of the window. So there is a one pointer end we will take and we will keep on adding the element until it reaches to the k and again there is one more while loop where we will keep on iterating the array until end is reaches to the end of the array and the window sum equals to window sum plus a of end plus plus minus a of start plus plus and this line clearly depict how we are moving the pointer towards right side and we are comparing the maximum over here and finally we will return the maximum from this method. So let's talk about the complexity guys. So the first loop will iterate or run max k time and the second one will iterate max n time in worst case. So the complexity for this solution will be O n plus k but k is negligible because k is going to be lesser than equals to n so we can just write the complexity in terms of n cells. So the complexity of the solution will be O n. So I hope guys you have got the idea how we have used two pointer technique to solve this sliding window. Basically this technique we have already used in the last tutorial itself but we were not aware that we are using the same thing. So those who are facing the difficulty to understanding what I have done for this sliding window I just highly recommend please go and watch out this tutorial first then it will be easy for you to understand this. So let's see the algorithm in action guys. So this is the method guys which will calculate the two sum and these are the two parameter which we are accepting integer array and the target and there is the same code guys which you just seen. So I am not going to walk you through again it is the same thing and it is the opposite directional approach and this is the code for the sliding window so in that we have used the same algorithm which we have just discussed. So I will just quickly run both the example in front of you and show you how it works. So let's quickly run the two sum guys. So I am just providing the input. So 7 is the number of element present in the array and the 6 is the target sum and these are the 7 elements. So let's see what we will get as the output. So we are getting 3 and 4. So it means because it is a one based indexing so 3 or 4 which is 3 3. So if you add these two elements you will get the target sum 6 right. Let's run another one. So in that you can see guys 8 is the number of element and 4 is the k size window size and these are the 8 elements. So the sum is 30. I hope guys you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you find this tutorial helpful please like comment share and subscribe to my youtube channel. Thanks for watching guys.